think at VHS, being Asian American means just having this kind of other identity you keep like, it's part of you, but it's not always like constantly there. It's always like on your skin and it's always what people like first see when they see you. Like the first split second they meet you, they like know your race. I think that uh, racism towards Asian Americans at VHS most of the time, in terms of my sense of it, is more subtle. And I think that it's uh, just like, culturally a lot, um, at least at VHS, making overt racist comments about Asian Americans is a lot more acceptable. There's a lot of like microaggressions or small things that are not really said but are like felt. Something that happens a lot is like teachers calling me like like by someone else's name and like they kind of have invasion. It makes me feel like as if I don't really exist as an like individual. I'm just like another Asian face to them. It's just like oh that's just like another Asian I need to keep track of. It's like oh it's bound to be one of these three right because they're all in one class. And I don't really see that happening with like white people. Yeah, no, the joke's about like how you're like, oh, of course you, you like do well in that class. Um, I mean, like at one hand it's like really nice that you like, they maybe expect me to do like well, but on the other hand it makes me feel like whatever achievements I made don't really mean anything. Like, oh, that was just gonna happen. Like it wasn't because you worked hard at all, like at all. Asian Americans are sometimes referred to as the model minority and this is a cultural expectation placed on individuals and our race as a whole that we should be smart, good at math, hardworking, and wealthy and because these attributes are seen as a positive thing in a person, they are sometimes considered a positive stereotype. I think positive stereotype in and of itself is kind of an oxymoron. Some people ask me like, you know, why aren't you in BC Calc? You're Asian. Um, I know they mean it in a joking way, but still I feel like I do have to, you know, take the hardest science or math classes. I feel like I put more pressure on myself to achieve more because I self, I subconsciously try to adopt that stereotype and try to push myself to be that when you don't live up to that it, it that stereotype then you can think poorly of yourself and that's a conflict for me because i want to be who i am and not what society dictates i am cuz then you're like oh am i just being the stereotype right now or is this actually what i want to do it has kind of just put me on guard, has made me more aware of like my identity, made me always think of things as an Asian American woman, as opposed to just like a student at BHS. I am always conscious of my race. Every time I walk into a room, I know that I'm a person of color, and when I'm with the administration, I know that almost everyone is white. It's something that I go around the world kind of keeping my back pocket. I think it'd be foolish for me to say this. I feel like there's sometimes, you know, when you meet someone for the first time, you know, there's like your first impression. So in order to keep a good first impression, you kind of act differently than who you are really. I have to be a lot more forceful and like, I have to make sure I compensate for the fact that everyone thinks Asians are shy. As an Asian American athlete, I feel like sometimes I need to sort of like do a bit extra to prove that I'm sort of like worthy of doing whatever sport I'm doing. Like I've had to be very careful about what I share about myself. Um, for example, I am a musician, I really love music, but that's never something I would say on the first day of class because as soon as I say I play classical music, I play viola, people shut down and you can see it. Um, so I would say something like, uh, instead my interests, I like drawing or something really basic so that people would forget it and people wouldn't remember, oh yeah, she plays classical music like every other Asian in the school. I've always kind of wanted to like distance myself from people who seem like more 
like from Asia as opposed to Asian American, which I know is like not great, I know it's wrong, but I just always feel like, oh, people will perceive me as like cooler if I seem whiter. My freshman year, um, we obviously did a lot of introductions, which of course I've learned to hate unlike anything else. Um, and as soon as I mentioned that I wasn't planning on doing a sport, you can see that look in people's eyes. And I feel like any minority would really know what that look is when people look at you and they're like, oh, you're one of those Asians. Like you're one of those people. And I don't have to see you as a real person. I can see you as a minority. And so I've always sort of felt awkward you know, being around other Asians and feeling judged by them. In the BHS culture, you kind of have to choose whether you want to be an Asian Asian where you only interact with Asians and are only seen as one of a blob of Asian people or completely assimilated where you basically kind of have to deny your culture. I think that that really plays into this idea that Asian Americans, even if your family has been here for generations, are perpetually foreigners in this country. I think it just, I don't know, just kind of like makes me feel like people are always trying to like get under my skin or kind of be like, oh, I know something about you or I suspect something about you that like you don't want to tell me, like get to the bottom of it, like unmask yourself. Like you're trying to be white, you're trying to like act white, wearing like white clothes, like talking about like white pop culture and stuff like that. But like, where are you really underneath that? I feel like it's a big problem. We don't learn about all of the the racism and the struggles that Asian Americans in this country have faced since the 1800s. And, you know, we don't learn about the Yellow Power Movement that happened in the 60s. We don't learn about, you know, Supreme Court cases that ruled that Japanese, or Japanese immigrants cannot become naturalized citizens. We don't really just learn about instances of racism that have happened over the course of the past couple centuries. And because we don't know the history of the struggle of Asian Americans, it becomes more acceptable to make jokes about that history. I see like, oh, we read all of these books in English classes and not one of them has been by an Asian author. There are whole subsets of Asia which don't count in terms of our working definition of Asian American. Not many people realize that South of Asia is also part of the whole Asian continent and it's also considered Asian. The struggles of Asian Americans is not talked about in the classroom, it's not talked about in you know, conversations about race generally. It's just not really in people's consciousnesses that it's, it's an issue. When you're Asian, you have no identity. Uh, when you look at MCAS scores, when you look at it as a faculty, that we are paying probably more attention to scores from Americans and Latinos. Um, sometimes there's not data presented for Asian Americans, um, or Asians, specific Asians. Um, so I think sometimes it's, it's a bit of a miss. Like it's just, it's so positive we're not even gonna look at it. I don't know, a group of people kind of just gets erased is pretty sad. You know, I was in a meeting one time where um, someone said, you know, so-and-so and myself are the only people of color in this room. And I was thinking like, well, I'm here, like, I'm not um, to be overlooked. What does it mean to be a person of color? Does that just refer to African American or, you know, Hispanic, like being Vietnamese, Japanese, Chinese, like, don't, don't, like, don't they all count? One of the ways things, the challenges for Asian American folk is does that count as being a person of color? Does that count for people in terms of um, affirmative action or anything else? Or is it that, oh, you're Asian and so you have so many assets going your way that why would we think of you as a person of color? I guess an example is college, such as I'm a junior now, something I'm thinking about, but. Lately, there's been a lot of news about, or like statistics about how it's really hard to get into college as an Asian American. You either have to fake on the application that you like make yourself sound as white as possible, um, and like check like the other box for like race and ethnicity. I just think that that's a huge disadvantage I have. When I got into college, I basically didn't tell anyone. Um, I'm never going to wear any university gear to school. I'm never going to talk about college um, or anything else like that because it becomes so race-linked, it's so awkward. Why would you do that? Because like you don't want to 
play yourself off as white when you're not. I think just so you can get into the school, I think that's really messed up. I've felt uncomfortable with some friends who like make like Asian jokes or something that always kind of like stings, especially with discussions of big events, like some of the jokes that were racist towards Asians that happened at the Oscars. In those conversations, I always feel like I'm kind of like looked upon as like, like what does she think? Like what's like the Asian perspective? When people are having conversations about race, she was like, do people really want to hear what it's like to be an Asian American or do they really just want to hear African American versus white? And I have that same feeling here. I, I, like, I never know when it's like the appropriate time to do so or when it's the appropriate time to bring up um, like issues regarding the Asian American community. There's always this fear that if we ever speak up about being discriminated that we'll be kicked out of the country or like we'll be minoritized even more. Asian Americans, like they'll play it off, like they'll joke about it too. I definitely joke about it too. And so that makes it seem like it's okay and so it doesn't get talked about as much. Because they're not seen as a threat, they're not seen as powerful. You're part of the conversation, but not quite. I think that everyone wants to hear their own story though. My experience, while it might not be similar to other people and it might not have been as bad as some other people, um, it's still an experience. It's something that you kind of just carry with you and sometimes it can be negative and uncomfortable and that people don't really talk about it that much and that I wish they would more. And I think for me, um, when people sort of look at me and see a foreigner, that's what makes me uncomfortable. I'm not ashamed of being Asian at BHS, but that's definitely something I've had to learn. I'm proud that I'm Asian. I was born here, like, this is like my America too. It's not just like, oh, um, like you can't just curse or distance me and like what I identify with. As an Asian American here, we're able to, like, we know how to handle it so it doesn't seem like it's a huge deal or anything, but it's really important to know that uh, it's not like just some joke. People take it seriously, like inside. Asian American folk matter. The voices of Asian Americans need to be heard. We need to be included in conversations about race and the culture of our community at PHS. And we can address stereotypes, fight generalization, and educate people on the diverse experience of Asian Americans all over. The only thing that we can't do and shouldn't do is remain silent any longer.